so so then in 83 you dropped your debut album self-titled yeah johnny gill yeah. but it didn't hit the charts well you know someone forgot to tell me <laughs> <laughs> so someone forgot to tell me you know and, and educate me about the failure because i had no clue when i released that album whether it was how well it did or how well it didn't do that it failed i had no clue about any of that stuff. I was totally oblivious to the fact that, you know, even though you might got this deal, there's a possibility that you might not be successful. I didn't have a clue. <laughs> All I know is I was recording and singing and I made records and made music and that was it. Failure was not even in the, the cards for me. I had later realized, you know, that, you know, the album shipped platinum came back wood, but before that, I should have <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. I mean, the album had two singles, Super Love and When Something's Wrong, something's with, my wrong baby. with My Baby. Yes. Uh, Super Love peaked at 29 on the Billboard R&B chart. Yeah, yeah. Uh, something's Wrong with My Baby peaked at number 57. But this is the R&B chart, which yeah. is not the main chart. So right. for a big label like Atlantic, that's not exactly a home run. Right. And I didn't know anything about chart positioning, none of that. I didn't have a clue to none of that stuff. Right. So all I knew was like I recorded some songs that I that made the album and that was out as a single. So it didn't, nothing registered to me to go. I never thought about it. Looked back and went, damn, it didn't work. So what am I going to do next? I didn't have a clue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then that next year in 84, you and Stacey actually had a duet album. Yeah. Perfect Combination. Which was Henry Allen's idea. And the single, Perfect Combination, actually peaked at 75 on the right. Billboard charts. So this was like your first somewhat hit. Right. You know what I yeah. mean? This was a kind of like you got over the hump. Just got over the hump or just uh, at least got everybody's attention. Yeah. And the album peaked at 139 out of 200. So, you know, you're you're progressing hey, at yeah, this I'm point. Yeah, I'm coming up. I'm on, right. I'm on my way up. You're on your way up. <laughs> then in 85, you dropped your second solo album, Chemistry, which 51 on the R&B hip hop album chart. So there's no real big singles off that either, right? Yeah, but no stopping me now. 51, come on now. Right. <laughs> you're getting there. You're getting there. Okay, so so let me ask you a question. By this time, were you and Stacy dating? Yeah. Stacy and I was dating before I actually had a record deal. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so back yeah, in kinda, D.C. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I always like to say, I was standing up on my pimp and even back then, and he was thinking, oh, well, now nah, because you got a record deal. You know, that's how she, you know. No, 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 no. I, I, you know, I was kind of, you know. <laughs> Standing up on my pimping back then too, <laughs> but no, I we we just uh, yeah we 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 were childhood friends and we went to elementary and we went to you know obviously to uh, junior high and we were all hanging out all the time and um, uh, you know which just kids being kids we just uh, were um, ended up uh, you know just dating mm -hmm. and uh, man that was probably. Yeah, that was my first love. And I first believe love. that was her first love, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, when you watch the the New Edition series, you mentioned, well, your character mentioned that you guys broke up because her mom, and she was very light-skinned. She was black, but, but very light-skinned. Yeah. Her mom had an issue with you being dark-skinned, which yeah. is why she broke up. And I remember having those conversations with Henry Allen and... Bill and some of the other, Bill Underwood, who was my manager at the time. And um, I've, I said this and I put this out too, that even hearing them laughing and joking with me, because uh, Henry used to call her Heavy Cream. That was her nickname to him. And he was like, yeah, yeah Heavy Cream, got, got, got your nose open, huh? You guys are, <laughs> yeah, you guys are real tight there, huh? You know, you know. You know, Sandra and them don't—they don't really like that. You know, you—you're you, a little too dark for her, and and you know they don't. You know, so I'm like listening to all this stuff, and I'm just a kid. So those things that was told to me, the one thing that I said that I stand on even to this day was that she never, her family, her mom, they, she never treated me or given me any indication like, well, hey, listen, you're too dark. We don't want you around here. You know, that was just from you know. Henry Allen and those guys, and they used to laugh. Uh, there was another guy uh, that uh, used to do uh, all the promotions for 
Deke DeBerry and a couple other ones they used to do promotion for Atlantic Cotillion Records in the in the metropolitan area. And so they all knew and had these thing where, you know, we're you know, we we're told to keep an eye on you guys and blah, blah, blah. And you expect that we're kids. And as a parent, you start to recognize, I'm I'm sure as a parent, you're looking going, eh, I'm starting to see my daughter grow up a little bit and looking like this is getting a little more serious. So I would assume even as a parent myself that, you know, you got to go, okay, let me keep an eye, whether I'm dark, light, light bright, whatever, mm-hmm. keep an eye on this little motherfucker because we got to keep an eye on our daughter who's a, who, who's in this business and God knows if she came up pregnant uh, this early, that could, could do a lot, a number of, uh, could do damage to her life or in her career. I mean, when you look back and think about it now as an adult, it would make only make sense. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, colorism, I mean, we're talking about the 80s also. Yeah. It, yeah. It's a little more pronounced. I mean, now you watch hip-hop videos and you see a bunch of dark-skinned women, but watch a music video in the 80s, yeah. it's all light-skinned girls. Yeah. Light a hip-hop video, was, yeah. R&B video, whatever, yeah, all yeah, light-skinned yeah, girls. Yeah. At one point, the light skin was in, man. It was like, if you wasn't light, you wasn't right. <laughs> and if you was dark, man, it was like, yo, you got an uphill battle. But it was, you know, uh, and it was crazy because as a kid, I... I had a complex about being dark as a kid growing up. And I remember many times, I mean, we would go play basketball. And a lot of times I didn't want to play um, too long because I always felt like I didn't want to be in the sun and uh, too long because I always felt like I was dark. And uh, not realizing even, like I said, even as a kid, that that was called a complex. (laughs) I just was like, just didn't want to be too dark and thought I was dark enough as it was and so when you're playing with your brothers with your buddies and you know your friends and, and they're like hey you know they're calling you darky you black you black of me and it's like you know I, I actually develop a complex from that yeah that's too bad man that's uh, something that kids shouldn't have to go through yeah you yeah, know because yeah. that that carries on uh through life well the blessing for me is later on recognizing and realizing who i who i am who i was and understanding that you know, that question hit me as I got older. And the question was, let me ask you a question. Why does people, and it's, whether it's Caucasians, whether it's just light-skinned people, why is it that they they like, during the summer, everybody wants to lay out, go to the beach and lay out to get what? Dark. <laughs> and you start putting it together to understand that, well, shit. If it's dark, it's so bad. Why the hell is everybody, why do they want to get dark? <laughs> you know, to understand, that, to come into my own understanding that, shit, being dark maybe is not that bad. <laughs> it's that American bullshit, man. Yeah. It's the yeah. history of slavery yeah. and, and, you know, yeah. the, uh, the separation of, of slaves back in the day between yeah. house slaves and field slaves and that bullshit. And, and yeah, you go to, it's funny because when I went to Africa, you, you I really realized how much of a bullshit concept it is yeah because out there everyone's comfortable with yeah. being who they are yeah you know what i'm saying you walk yeah. around to senegal and everyone's happy everyone's Everybody, you know yeah. but you go to america and there's and there's complex it was always it is yes yeah. the light skin versus the dark skin and mm-hmm. it's like you know and it really starts to i mean for me it, it, it really affected me early on yeah and then i started realizing as i got older i didn't have no problem with women and options with women so <laughs> i was just thinking shit Guess being uh, dark ain't too bad, and I mean I ended up with one of the at that time think about one of the hottest girls in the in the business. The two hottest women that was in the business at that time was 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 Stacy and Janet. <laughs> right. So you know it was funny because you know they end up with with her with with with, with Stacy. I was just like, I'm shoot, I'm not doing too bad. 